And, um, yeah, I, I uh, just wanted to add that I don't really believe in animal testing. I think it re reveals much more about the cruelty of human beings and their inability to want to uh, look at humans while high and instead want to uh, pretend that it's more scientific to uh, study um, knockout mice. Uh, it, it does reveal some interesting things about cannabinoid receptors and, and how knock, knockout mice drown if they don't have them, but uh, I think we can learn more about how cannabis affects learning and memory by studying stoned humans in their natural setting. So I'd just like to add that. Uh, also, uh, you saw a, um, a clip from this film, First Flower. Um, it's a Nova special uh, on public television, and, and uh, it really goes deeply into uh, this search for the very first flower in the world and how archaeologists have been studying fossils, and they come to the conclusion that it, uh, flowers first arose uh, from mutations uh, about 120 million years ago. And uh, that got me wondering, okay, well, when did cannabis first arrive? Apparently, there are no cannabis fossils on record. Uh, I stumbled across this book here, fancy, expensive book, called The Medicinal Uses of Cannabis and Cannabinoids. Uh, in chapter 4, in an article called The Evolution of Cannabis in Coevolution with the Cannabinoid Receptor, a Hypothesis, by John M. McPartland and Jeffrey W. Guy of GW Pharmaceuticals. Um, these guys uh, estimate by uh, examining cannabis' parasites, uh, how it has similar parasites to a sister group, the nettle, and uh, no shared parasites with a cousin group, the fig slash mulberry group. So uh, it estimates uh, on that basis that uh, cannabis could have uh, not originated on planet Earth earlier than 34 million years ago. And I thought, okay, that's a while back. That puts uh, cannabis kind of in the into the realm uh, of after primates, uh, but before apes. And that's very interesting. And then uh, these uh, fellows, uh, Dr. Guy and, and uh, McParland, they also uh, point out that endocannabinoids, which uh, you know are found within us and, and many, many animals, uh, most animals in fact, uh, they go back far, far uh, before primates or mammals or even dinosaurs and amphibians and fish. They go back over 600 million years ago to a time uh, even before animals and plants were separate. Um, fascinating stuff. So uh, uh, there's several theories floating around about how, how cannabis came into being. To oversimplify it a little bit, uh, it's like a, a mutant nettle plant uh, just kind of started to remember or, or you know, harken back to a time or draw upon their genetic heritage which once had endocannabinoids and brought them back and uh, for you know, some bizarre mutation, genetic mutation and this was very attractive to humans or Neanderthals or monkeys. We don't really know how far back our relationship with cannabis goes. It, it could have gone back to, uh, well, you know, there's evidence that it goes back uh, tens of thousands. When we first started using the rope, um, but uh, it probably goes back farther than that. Uh, 1.8 million to 1 million years ago, we learned to use fire, and it was, you know, uh, around that time we were moving into China, which is uh, kind of Central Asia, which is where cannabis originates, and uh, we could have definitely come in contact with it then. Uh, there's this other book called Intoxication by a guy named uh, Ronald K. Siegel, and uh, he points out that lots of animals get high and, and that monkeys uh, have been uh, observed eating hemp leaves. So, uh, 
our relationship with cannabis could go back quite far. Um, there's another really good book on the subject. It's called The uh, Botany of Desire by a, a Michael Pollan. And um, you should check this book out too if you're interested in this subject. There's a real good quote from it. I'm just going to read to you. Uh, whatever THC's original purpose may have been, as soon as a certain primate with a gift for experiment in horticulture stumbled upon its psychoactive properties, the plant's, the plant's evolution embarked on a new trajectory, guided from then on by that primate and his desires. And, uh, yeah, all this uh, detail will be found in an article that I'm going to try to get published in Cannabis Culture Magazine, so watch for that. Basically, to sum it up, uh, human beings and cannabis uh, have evolved together, they've strengthened each other, and uh, we are going to need cannabis in the future if we want to continue to evolve, if we want to evolve past uh, poverty, past sickness, past illness. We're going to need our, our first... Uh, one of our first medicines, definitely, and in, in our first rope, our first true paper. And, and the medicine that brought us the time slow high that, uh, you know, definitely contributed to jazz music and the development of the computer and a lot of other cultural um, benefits like theater and, and uh, writing and, and even religion. So we definitely need cannabis in our lives. We, we need to learn how to share this plant so we can evolve past the point of poverty. And we need to learn to stop scapegoating each other and to bring this plant back into our, our lives and our culture fully uh, might give us the opportunity to evolve beyond being uh, homo sapien, beat each other up as soon to go right to homo sapien, learn to share this stuff as you get my meaning. So uh, we need cannabis to evolve and uh, we should all learn more about it and, and uh, defend this plant, this wonderful tree of life, and bring it back into our evolution, lest, lest we um, allow the drug war to uh, select all the sensitive, intelligent, autonomous people out of the human race to languish in prison and just evolve to being an obedient, stupid group of people without cannabis. That, I don't want that. You don't want that. Uh, I will leave you with those thoughts. And this, a section of this poem from a guy named Nizami who lived uh, around uh, between 1141 and 1209 in Azerbaijan, which is right above Iran on the Caspian Sea, in a, uh, a town called Ganja, by the way. Interesting little aside there. But anyway, this, this wonderful poet... Nizami uh, wrote um, this poem, which I will leave you with. Our, our fathers planted gardens long ago, whose fruits we reap with joy today. Their labor constitutes a debt we owe, which to our heirs we must repay. For all crops sown in any land are destined for a future man. My name is Ben David Malmalavine. This has been High Society. High as you get off this net. Now with the assurance of DNA insight, the family tree of living, flowering plants has largely been written. The old family tree was now in for a major pruning. Roses were found to be closely related to squash. Strawberries to marijuana this meat-eating pitcher plant to China's famous rhododendrons. For centuries, water lilies were thought to be nearly twins with a lotus. No longer. This, believe it or not, is the closest living relative of the lotus. This is the London plane tree or sycamore. And as you can see, this is not a little water plant. This is a big tree.